You may recognize these products right away. If you've been loyal AMEG customers, we are excited to be proud partners with AMEG Technology. Wavelinks um, is a manufacturer of readers and credentials and a few other things which we'll get to, but today we want to focus on the symmetry line, specifically the most intimate part of the system, the things that we all get our hands on, the readers and the credentials. So today, um, what we'd like to cover in our agenda and a few learning objectives for you folks, there will be a quiz at the end, so take some notes. We wanted to cover um, end users at risk, the, uh, the, main, the main risks that you're facing today, um, and how we can help mitigate these risks. We want to spend a little bit of time addressing this new industry initiative called LEAF, what is LEAF? We'll discuss a case for custom keys, why it's so important that customers should take advantage of the opportunity to own their own keys. We'll look at a couple of case studies, AMEG customer case studies, who have taken the leap from unsecure credentials to highly secure credential environments with many more added bonus, uh, bonuses by working within the LEAF ecosystem. And then at the end, we'll have a short quiz with some pretty cool giveaways that Lori came up with, so hopefully you'll stay tuned. So let's jump right into it. Um, the first things first, why we're having these conversations and why we're um, bringing these, these things to the attention of both the end users and our integrators is there's some pretty huge challenges out there right now in the physical access control world. There's some immediate risks that our end users are facing with regards to proximity technology and uh, weekend wiring. So legacy technology has been compromised and we're here to educate the end users and, and the integrators. It's their duty to make sure that our end users know what's happening. Um, there's some current barriers as well with how end users are uh, pr procuring these readers and credentials and the risks involved and how they try to keep this information secure. So we say proprietary vendors are blocking change. And then there's the future demands coming our way with, I say millennials wanting mobile, but everyone's talking about it. We need to have a solution for moving towards this hands-free environment. So we'll address that. And AMEG has been early to market with their, um, with their addressing this, this new movement. So it's pretty exciting to be working with them with the Symmetry Blue app. So how can we help mitigate these risks as Wavelinks, the manufacturer, and obviously OEM partner with, um, with AMEG? We make readers, which you're familiar with. We actually have a line of readers, these three familiar formats that you see right here that are customized exactly for AMEG, the symmetry line. Um, all of our readers support legacy, current, and future formats. The idea being that these will be the last readers you'll ever need to buy. We've customized these readers for AMEG to meet the exact specifications of their symmetry system. So they're optimized for excellent performance within the symmetry ecosystem. We've also done a couple of um, unique configurations to make these readers specifically unique to AMEG. Um, there's, for example, there's an LED configuration that is unique to AMEG that is not present in the Wavelinks branded model. You can see here we have the same looking readers, but we have, um, we also have Wavelinks branded or even unbranded versions of our models available so that end users may want to customize um, these readers as well to meet their needs. We also make credentials. You've recognized some little old school key fobs that are still in deployment today, but also the hardware, the credentials, um, as well as you can recognize here the Symmetry Blue mobile application. So we're working in all three capacities or formats in terms of credentialing. And we're going to touch a little bit on, on the LEAF uh, industry initiative in a, in a few minutes, but it really just means multi-vendor dev device support and letting the customers own their own keys. And the third thing, which I like to put front and center, and this is, you know, one of the reasons you haven't heard of Wavelinks the brand is because of the way we go to market. Our strategy is to partner with amazing enterprise access control manufacturers like AMEG um, and their symmetry ecosystem. But what we do in order to support our OEM partners, as well as the channel, the channel partners, the integrators, and even the end users, is that we make plans. We specialize in customizing transition strategies to get these customers out of a very unsecure and risky environment into an encrypted and robust environment in such a way that really works for them, meaning within a budget or a certain time frame, 
that's where we really specialize and sort of add some extra value to the partnership. So we'll touch on a couple of those when we explain to you um, some, some use cases that, that we've had together. So let's take a look at the first major risk that everybody, it's kind of the buzzword right now, the prox risk, the idea that low frequency proximity technology that's being used in credentials from card to reader is really no longer a safe environment. So we say enterprise level customers cannot afford the risk of using an easy to clone credential. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Well, you may have seen these key me kiosks. We've sort of embedded a little map here. If you type in um, your own area code on, on this key.me.net site or key.me.net, it might be key.me.com, but either way you can type in and see where all of these key copying kiosks, try saying that 10 times fast, um, sort of are in your neighborhood. And you can easily go in and clone not just your physical key, but your credential or your key fob as well for as low as $9.99. Or if you really want your bang for your buck, you could buy your own handheld RFID writer and reader cloner off of Amazon or eBay, and you can go around and absolutely make copies of your own gym passes or your company access control cards. So this is an, you know, an immediate need to transition to an encrypted protocol. So yeah, how, just Sarah. how easy is it? Oh, go ahead. There, I was just going to say, it's just key.me. It's actually a really kind of strange website, but it's key.me. So go ahead. Oh, okay. All right, so let's see how easy it is. We, there's a whole bunch of these videos on YouTube right now. I picked a, a short one here, but you can see just how easy it is using one of these little handheld devices. Boom, it's that easy. And I didn't mean to take you, <laughs> I didn't mean to drop the mic and stop the presentation completely, sorry. There we go. So that's just an indication of how quickly and easily anybody can grab one of these handheld devices and clone that RF frequency technology. The other immediate risk, which you might not be aware of, is what we're calling the weekend risk. You're probably familiar with the industry standard weekend wiring or communication protocol uh, between the reader and the panel today. Um, the most common wiring protocol is the weekend wiring, and that's six wires that are communicating in a unidirectional manner between the reader and the panel over the data wires, um, data one and data two. Unfortunately, um, our hackers have also found a pretty nifty way of intercepting this unidirectional communication and not just capturing one or copying, copying one key card, but capturing all of the cardholder database information. There's a way that can easily, um, where they can slip a cloning device or a wire skimming device just inside um, behind the reader stick that onto the weekend wires and capture all of that cardholder information quite quickly. In fact, they can even do it remotely from as far away as a van sitting outside the building. So the next risk that our customers need to be aware of is just sort of starting to plan for upgrading the communication between the reader and the panel. And there is a solution. The industry has, has sort of come out with a new um, industry standard called OSDP, Open secure device, open supervised device protocol. And this is a way of converting the communication protocol from a unidirectional language to a bi-directional encrypted environment. So what you're seeing here is now the communication between the reader and the panel becomes bi-directional, encrypted, secure, with other benefits added once these panels have been upgraded to OSDP. Now, there's a couple of things that come into play, especially as an end user who has to take on the cost of now upgrading panels this is where we come in and we help educate your customers on um, a path that makes sense into making these upgrades happen in the correct amount of time and within budget. So let's take a look at that. We like to say that our readers, the, the AMEG symmetry readers, the wavelengths, ethos, ethos readers are the last readers, readers you'll ever buy. And here's a few unique transition benefits that you can get just from upgrading to these readers alone. 
So the first thing that we want to point out is that there's in, during our migration paths, there are no user disruptions. Our readers can read multiple technologies as well as all bit formats simultaneously. So this will help us sort of in the migration path from reading leg legacy technology of proximity to current encrypted environments, um, encrypted smart cards, EV1, EV2, as well as future technologies, Bluetooth and NFC. There's no performance issues when you're installing these readers. We have a patented prox filter that comes installed in our readers, which allows us to um, provide a seamless migration path without any performance issues at the reader end. So, for example, when you start to deploy dual tech cards and multi tech readers, the multi tech reader will never have any performance issues reading multiple technologies, multiple technologies at one time. Um, and we'll highlight how we do this in our case study in a couple of minutes. This one's really interesting though and very important for you to understand. It's something that really sets us apart right now in the industry is that when you install our readers, that's it. There's no extra labor during your panel upgrade. So if and when it does come time for you to upgrade the communication protocol from weekend to OSDP panels, we say we can support both weekend wiring and OSDP wiring, hosting this on the same wires. We have a patented feature called the auto detect, OSDP auto discovery feature also in our readers. So consider if we go back to those wires, you've got weekend wiring going from reader to panel. When we upgrade to OSDP panels, we encourage you to use the exact same wires. Those um, weekend data zero and data one wires will convert to RS45 A and B wires and they will connect directly to those new OSDP panels and at which time you'll be able to automatically detect that the upgrade has been done and those readers are now ready to communicate over OSDP and receive any communication from those panels um, moving forward. So one of the features that will be available through these OSDP panels, in particular the M4000 panel, which is being launched by AMEG and will be ready soon, um, is that eventually you'll be able to receive remote upgrades. For integrators, this means no truck rolls. This means you can do upgrades to firmware from the panel and remotely. And of course, the greatest part for everybody here is that these readers are all cost competitive. So how are other vendors addressing this prox risk? Um, this is one of the main current barriers that's happening in the marketplace right now. Because of this proximity risk, because of this weekend wiring risk, there's been a flurry of activity of educating the end users and the integrators on this risk and having to fix it immediately. Um, but other vendors um, are handling it a little bit differently than, than we are. So first, let's see what's actually happening in, in the market right now when other vendors are, are addressing this risk. They're providing a solution where really their packaging is proprietary, which does limit sourcing and competition for fair pricing. What I mean by that is when you purchase an off-the-shelf reader and credential set from a manufacturer, an off-the-shelf system um, using symmetrical encryption means that that vendor puts the same symmetrical encryption keys in each and every reader that they put out into the marketplace. And in order for that information to stay secure, they must keep that key secret. So they don't share their keys with anybody. If you've noticed, there are other vendors that will allow you to put other devices or support other devices and applications on their credential, but it's they say who, they say how, they say how much, they say where, they say when. So they're keeping those keys a secret. The other thing other vendors are doing with their off-the-shelf readers and credentials is in those credentials, every credential that you purchase, every card has what we call a memory structure or a data structure imprinted on the card. It's basically a, a little table of contents which shows where other manufacturers can sort of put their, their application or their data on the card. Off-the-shelf um, readers and credentials sold by other manufacturers will ensure that their data structure is closed, which means the end user will be limited in terms of what devices and what applications are compatible with that card, who can use it, and how much it will cost. 
The other thing is they don't let the end users own their own keys, which means, again, you're sort of handcuffed to this proprietary vendor who can tell you what, where, when, how much, et cetera. So on the other side of the coin, the other side of the card, this is how we can help mitigate these issues by issuing secure credentials, but still breaking the chains in this proprietary relationship that's been the, the industry standard. So with Wavelinks credentials, which you can obviously purchase through AMEG, we provide a credential that is based on MyFair Desfire EV2. It's a highly secure encrypted chip that supports legacy prox and future mobile technology. So it's future proof. We're looking for that. We also offer what's called an open data structure. So the memory structure I was speaking of that is kept secret and held hidden by other manufacturers, we actually publish, well, not we, LEAF, we'll get to LEAF. The LEAF industry, uh, the LEAF consortium or association will publish this memory structure publicly so that other card manufacturers can feel free to use this data structure on their credentials. We're going to dig into LEAF a little bit in a second here, but the idea that you must take away here is that LEAF offers an open data structure, which means limitless device and application compatibility. It's flexible. And of course, we are the, the huge sort of evangelists for having end users being able to own their own keys, um, being able to control their own destiny and decide who gets to play in their credential sandbox. We do this through um, a program that we call custom key management, which we'll sort of hone in on in just a moment. But first, what is LEAF? We've thrown this term around. Um, I'd love to host a contest to see who can come up with what LEAF should stand for. It's a four letter word that currently is not an acronym, which is an itch that I cannot scratch. But what's awesome is the concept behind LEAF. LEAF is a new industry initiative. Um, it was, started by a group of vendors, including Wavelinks. Um, in fact, if you, after this, want to learn more about LEAF, you can visit leafidentity.com to see the full roster of participating LEAF evangelists, members of the consortium, and in the entire ecosystem of LEAF-supported products that are available today. And the list is, is being added to daily, so we encourage you to stay um, live on that site. But what is LEAF? Well, in a nutshell, it's yes, it's a credential designed, like we said before, around the most secure Desfire EV2 chip, um, which allows for multiple sources of, of purchasing these credentials, and they give excellent performance. It's also a data structure, which I mentioned, openly public on the LEAF website. It's a data structure, which is encouraged um, to be shared with other manufacturers of different devices and applications so that multiple um, multiple applications can be used on one card. So it's fully defined for enterprise and campus with an open memory structure for more applications, multiple keys per application, and the customer owns the key. So it's made very simple, this process. And it's a standard. So this is sort of the next OSDP, if you will. This is the next industry standard moving towards this, this secure and yet open and interoperable solution for credentials with no licensing fees, with guaranteed device compatibility and a really high adoption rate. So here's an example of, of using the LEAF credential in a one campus environment. This is really, um, you know, these are the types of end user environments that have driven um, the, LEAF, the LEAF initiative. So here is a picture of the LEAF memory structure. It shows you here that within this memory structure, there are multiple layers, and within each layer, we have the ability to, ability to host different um, devices or, or applications. So you can see here the top layer is the access control data layer. It's for general purpose. Out the box, this would be the one that would um, support your readers um, or your secure printers or your logical access. So the access control layer, there's actually more to it than this, but you can see here on this particular one campus application, they're using the access control data layer for three separate access control systems, the readers, the logical access for secure sign-on, as well as secure printing. Now, if this customer had um, 
engaged in what we call custom crypto, which is the next level security. This is where the end user owns their own keys. If we were to expand this layer down, you could see that within the custom access control data layer, there are actually 16 individual signature keys that can be assigned within the access control data layer. So what I mean by that, there's a couple of ways this can be used. One is just the way you see here, where each individual custom key could be assigned to each individual access control component of the system. So here we're using three separate keys out of 16. The other way this can be used, and think about this in terms of a hospital campus environment, environment. Maybe there's a hospital or um, group of hospitals within an organization where there are maybe 15 different locations and they need to have their doctors, especially during this time, be able to um, move back and forth between the different 15 locations with just one card for access at each individual hospital. So instead of assigning just one key to every single hospital, we can now assign each individual hospital an individual custom crypto key within the access control layer so that particular doctor or, or nurse can go freely between the environments and securely access um, each hospital. There's another layer here which we call the EV1 backward compatibility layer. So this is sort of a built-in off-the-shelf way for us to be able to speak and support um, different locks. A Legion uses EV1 as their um, encryption chip and so does Asa Abloy. So here would be, you know, in campus there's obviously a lot of these locks you'll come into contact with. So we have full support for um, several models of locks within the Allegiant family and the Asa Abloy family. <clears throat> the campus application layer, this is where, um, so I'll use the university as an example, perhaps there's um, some proprietary student information that the campus or the university wants to store on that card, but not make it available to any of the other vendors on the card. There's actually three separate keys within the campus data layer, which can be assigned to different campus specific applications. So for example, we could take one and apply it to the library management system. Maybe you want to store personal information, student identification information, or maybe they want access to cafeteria vending or dining, and this looks like access to a sports arena. Any sort of unique campus applications um, can be stored in this campus application layer because the end user owns the keys, they're able to determine who they want to share their keys with. Same thing with biometrics. There's room on here for a biometric template, whether you're using um, oops, an iris ID reader or a fingerprint reader, we're able to store those templates on the card. Um, user access rights is another layer um, for multi-dwelling units, for housing. And of course, these cards are available in four and eight K um, memory sizes. So there's lots of room to store additional information on these cards. But that's just one example of how the LEAF memory structure or the LEAF credential can be used as a one campus card. So let's talk about custom keys and who the ideal sort of customer is for for utilizing these, these owning their own key situation. You know, there, there is certainly a case for a customer who really only needs an off the shelf set of, of keys and cards. They have no need to add any additional applications or devices to their card. Maybe it's a smaller environment, let's say less than a hundred readers. Um, someone who really doesn't have an appetite to own their own keys or to manage that whole system. We definitely have um, a large deployment of end users who are fine with off the shelf um, readers and credentials and, and we support that and we sell those. The enterprise customers are the ones who tend to really love the idea and having the ability to, to work towards um, a custom key managed environment. So ideally the profile looks like a customer who needs a highly secure credential for their enterprise environment and end-to-end -end encrypted solution. Certainly a customer who wants a non-proprietary um, arrangement with a vendor for fair sourcing and fair pricing. And also the customer who maybe wants limitless potential for device and application interoperability. Maybe they want to use that card, like we said, in a one campus card environment for access to um, things other than access control. So that would be sort of the general customer profile for a customer in an enterprise environment who could certainly benefit from owning their own keys. Now, what does that mean, owning my own keys? Now what do I do? Well, 
this is again where Wavelength um, is able to sort of pop our heads up out of the sand and say, hey, this is how we support our OEM partners and down through the channel through integration and end users. What we offer with our entire solution is a key management service. So let's say we've identified an end user, an enterprise environment who says, yep, we definitely have, are a good candidate for custom keys. Now what do we do? What does this key management service look like? Well, first of all, it means, yes, Mr. or Mrs. End user, you get to own your keys and your keys are unique to your environment, guaranteed, protected, all devices. The access control data is stored and it's signed using signature keys for authenticity. So if you remember when I pointed out the access control layer of the memory structure, if we were to expand that layer, you would see 16 individual custom crypto keys in there available for assigning for individual um, access control applications. Our credentials are guaranteed to be um, not duplicatable. I don't know if duplicatable is a word, but I think you understand what I'm saying. And we meet the stringent EAL 5 plus standard rating. Um, and the way that we charge for this is a one-time upcharge fee per reader with a lifetime of support with regards to key management and end user support. So it's a pretty awesome deal. Now, Leaf Custom Crypto, we have a process in place for your customer end users and integrators to start to initiate this process. We don't need to get into the, the nitty gritty of it today, but I just wanted to show you there's a three step process. Once you've identified an end user as a candidate for custom crypto or for, for key management, we have a step by step guide. And the first step is to reserve your key set. We have a simple link here, which would take you to our website and walk you through the steps needed to simply reserve a key set. Now this can be done by the end user or by a custodian or a rep that the end user has assigned, this might be their integrator of choice. At this point, you'll walk through the website, fill out the form, reserve a custom key set, and you'll be assigned from our team a custom part number, and you'll define who are going to be sort of the key custodians, the purchase partners, and the requesters for this whole process. Then we move into the key set registration process, and this is where Wavelengths works with the end user or the representative to gather the project details, assign key custodians, and define the data structure. Start to figure out, okay, you own your own keys, now who are you gonna give the keys to? What do we wanna see living on, on that card? So we start to work through your process and eventually your migration steps towards making that happen. And then we're off to the races. We implement, we execute, we deploy, you're, you're off and running with your one card system. And then at some point you may decide that you want to add another device or another application to your one card because of course you own the keys. So we do have a key set retrieval process in place. Again, all of these steps are laid out through our very easy step-by-step -step, um, website form. Wavelengths will work again with the end user or the custodian to create an approved key set exchange plan. And the end user is free to provision the devices with custom key sets how they like. So that's how Wavelinks pops up and starts to help manage that process with your partners at AMEG and your chosen integrators. So mobile is that future demand we mentioned as well, sort of the third risk or, or third challenge that's faced immediately today and everyone's talking about it and not everyone's doing it yet. Um, Leaf mobile is coming soon, meaning a free application where um, the LEAF ecosystem of devices will all be supported within a mobile application, but I don't have that to show to you today. What I do have to show to you today is our first to market early adopters um, AMEG Symmetry Blue app, which has already launched and available and has even had some amazing upgrades um, made to it. There's a, a next release that's just come out with dual authentication. It's pretty awesome. I have it on my phone. It works awesome. But the main key points that you're getting here is in addition to your deployment of credentials, you've upgraded to, to leave credentials, let's say. We've moved out of a prox environment into an encrypted smart card environment. And then you've got some users who um, would like to, to use a mobile credential. Or maybe you have an environment where um, you've got you know, physical credentials issued to thousands throughout this enterprise environment, but you have a situation where maybe you need to um, give credential, temporary credentials to uh, contractors who may have to come and do work temporarily at certain locations. This is a great solution for that where um, we can issue 
a mobile credential to that temporary worker, and it's a free application that simply issues a, a, a mobile credential, which can then be tied into the Symmetry system and managed accordingly. So the mobile app is called the Symmetry Blue app, which you can get download from the App Store. Um, it, it ensures secure access control via mobile device. It's intuitive. It works across the range of Symmetry products on both Android and iOS. Um, it can be used as a transition product as well, where users can use both their physical credential or their mobile app. And it's a download and go. It's a free app with no fees, subscriptions, licenses to manage. So it's a great add-on as we're starting to move towards a, a truly um, mobile hands-free environment. So here I wanted to sort of take some time and put this all together. And we've got, we've had the good fortune of working on some amazing transition projects with AMED, um, migrating their customers from a truly unsecure environment to a highly secure environment through the products that we've outlined, um, that I've outlined for you. And so I'm actually gonna turn this over to Lori to speak. She's gonna, she's had some firsthand examples in, in sort of bringing these projects to fruition. So we've got two case studies and Lori, if you wanna jump in and you can take us through the story on how we did that. Sure, sure. So you, you don't mind driving, great. So, and I'm gonna be quick because we're running out of time. We're actually six minutes over, but that's because we started six minutes late, I, sus I suspect. Um, but just so you understand, this is a real live thing happening today. It's happening almost on a weekly basis. And Chris Randall can attest to that. These enterprise level clients are waking up one day and they're, they're you know, they're, what's keeping them up at night, maybe they're not even waking up, but keeping them up at night is the fact that they've got these risks that Sarah explained earlier. So <clears throat> we have this very large healthcare um, facility, uh, healthcare company, I will say, that had all 125 kilohertz procs. They actually had two different bit formats uh, of credentials issued out there in the field. They had three different facility codes um, within those creden that credential population. Um, and so what we do when, when Sarah says we make plans, first of all, we, you know, we work with um, our OEM, we work with AMAG, we work with the integrators to uh, evaluate the existing installed base. And this is information that comes right out of the access control system, so it's easy to get. It's not something you have to spend months and weeks doing a survey uh, in order to acquire this information. So this particular um, healthcare facility had this situation going in, their card ranges went from 1,000 to 20,000. Those are the unique badge ID numbers. And so we transitioned them to a high frequency, more uh, encrypted um, leaf credential technology. We transitioned everybody to a 37-bit format. So the bit format was now consistent throughout. We issued them cards with a facility code that was unlike anything they already had in the field. So for example, that was facility code 21. And we started their unique badge ID numbers at badge ID 30,000 to make sure we didn't duplicate anything that was already out there in use in the field. And we issued them a dual technology card. So they have a card that has PROX and it has DESFIRE EV2 LEAF data structure in the card. So that card will work on the old readers and that card will work on the new readers. Now, um, Sarah mentioned a, a patented uh, uh, thing that we have, we call it a PROX filter. And so basically we built into the reader firmware the um, PROX filter, which says, Sarah, can you, sorry, go backwards, yeah. The, the PROX filter basically says, if I see a low frequency signal that has 37 bits, it has facility code 21, and the badge ID is greater than 20,000, then I'm gonna ignore that low frequency um, signal. And so in that case, the reader only looks for the encrypted card technology, the encrypted chip um, transmission, and it authenticates through the keys, and then it grabs the information and it pushes it up to the symmetry system. So as you issue new cards and you put on new readers on the wall, you're addressing that risk 100%. If somebody were to take my dual tech card and clone it, clone the prox side of it, that prox side of it is no longer gonna be read by the new readers that are, it's gonna be completely ignored. So you're actually addressing the risk as you gradually change out cards and gradually change out readers. So it's, it's a really great transition strategy. It allows them to do it based on their own um, schedule, on their own budget. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. 
Okay. So just to give you the idea of the scope, this is a 7,000 reader install, 20,000 cards, and um, they'll probably do a transition over 24 to 36 months, and that's okay. This also is a site that you, because they're using LEAF, they're um, able to share their, their private encryption keys with ASA Obloy devices, and this one card will work on wireless locks as well as it will work on the um, wired access control readers. Okay, so the next one is gonna be very quick. The next one is just another um, uh, example. This is actually a tech company, and this one's unique because it's actually a non-symmetry customer, and I want all of you to understand that uh, if you run into opportunities, you know that they have low frequency cards and they need to get away from them. Um, AMAG has been a phenomenal partner in helping us work with other OEM systems, systems that don't necessarily support, you know, or I shouldn't say support, they don't necessarily evangelize LEAF and they don't evangelize their clients getting out of that risk area with PROC. They'll continue to feed them procs as long as they'll continue to buy it. Well, the end users realize this isn't any good, so we partner with AMAG to provide just the reader solution uh, even. And um, this particular client had 4,400 readers. They had 90% um, were HIV procs credentials out of 30,000 credentials. 10% were actually MyFair EV1. And again, we do a very, um, a very good screening of the existing installed base, and then we develop a plan to help them transition with the minimal disruption. This particular client has their LEAF credentials fully encrypted, also working with Allegiant AD wireless locks, Iris ID biometric readers, Siemens time and attendance uh, devices, DIRAC E-Line IP cabinet locks, and RF ideas uh, USB readers for secure printing. So they are kind of what we call our LEAF uh, super user. Um, so this is all happening. This is a reality. This is not pie in the sky. It's, it's completely doable and transitioning from low frequency procs to encrypted high frequency secure technology isn't something you should be afraid of. We're doing it. We're doing it really well and the end users are falling in love um, with the integrators that bring these solutions to, their, to them.